Want to get away? Want to find a beach city or town that isn't too touristy? In today's video, I'm going to tell you about 10 of the best beach towns nobody really knows about. Now, obviously, if you're from the area of one of these beach towns, you know about it. Maybe even if you're from the same state. But most of the people in the U.S. have never heard about these towns. These are the beach cities that don't get overrun by tourists every summer, like Venice, California, Miami Beach, Virginia Beach, South Padre Island, Atlantic City, or Myrtle Beach. During the summer and spring break, all those cities go crazy. Wall to wall people, you can't find parking. It just makes the whole trip not worth it in some cases. The towns on this list do get some extra people during the summer and spring break, obviously. I mean, any place that has a beach and water, people will show up. Now, are the cities on this list ghost towns during the summer or spring break? No. Are they crowded? Maybe. Are these cities internationally known? Not really. They're just the way a lot of us like our beach towns. You know, places where you might be able to relax on a vacation or maybe even find a nice place to call home in retirement or even now. Get it? Got it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Ocracoke Island, North Carolina. Now, that's a tough word to say and I'm sure I messed it up a little bit. But this is a little unknown island on the outer banks of North Carolina. Ocracoke Island was first settled by the English in the early 17th century. The island was used as a stopover point for ships traveling between the North American colonies and Europe. In the 18th century, it became a popular destination for pirates. The most famous pirate ever to live died here, well, just off the coast. Blackbeard, he was killed in a battle off the coast of the island in 1718. Ocracoke Island is a small island, like I said, off the coast of North Carolina in what is known as the Outer Banks. It is known for its beautiful beaches and laid-back atmosphere. The island is home to a variety of activities like sunbathing, fishing, boating, and hiking. There are a number of restaurants and shops on the island, as well as a few historical sites. If you want to get here, it's kind of hard to get to. There's no bridge. You got to take a ferry, and it's already about 150 miles away from Norfolk, Virginia. This is truly a hidden gem. If you want to buy a home here, the minimum is going to be about $450,000. They have a population of just under 800 people, and their average temperature year-round is about 57 degrees. Number nine, Block Island, Rhode Island. Block Island is just off the coast of Rhode Island, about 30 miles. It's in between Martha's Vineyard and Long Island. This is another place that you'll have to take a ferry to get to. They do have planes, but most people will take ferries. People do go visit this place during, you know, different times of the year, but it's a good size island, so there's plenty of room to, I don't know, explore, walk around, rent a moped. It's not going to get crazy with a bunch of college kids. Block Island was first settled by the English in the 1660s. The island was used as a fishing and whaling center. In the 19th century, Block Island became a popular destination for summer vacationers, but it's definitely overshadowed by Martha's Vineyard Nantucket. Block Island is home to a number of historical sites including the Old Harbor Light and the Southeast Lighthouse. But it is known for its beautiful beaches and its charming little village. It's a very active arts community here also. While researching this, I found it's a great place for bird watching. It's kind of popular in that crowd. And if you want to buy a house here, at a minimum, you're going to be paying about $1.3 million. Every house they have for sale that's showing on Zillow is amazing. But Block Island sits about 30 miles from Providence, Rhode Island, and they have an average yearly temperature of 54 degrees. Number eight, Friday Harbor, Washington. Friday Harbor is on the east side of San Juan Island, which is north of Seattle and right across from Victoria, Canada. Friday Harbor was first settled by the Hudson Bay Company in 1850. The town grew quickly, and by the 1880s, it was a major center for fishing and logging. In the early 20th century, Friday Harbor became a popular destination for artists and writers. The town is home to a number of art galleries and museums. If you want to move here, it's got tons of out door activities. This is a good size island and they only have about 2,200 residents. If you want to buy a home up here, they start off around 400,000. There's not many of those. That's in town. If you want to spread out to all of San Juan Island, you're looking at nice coastal properties that are like, you know, two million, three million dollars. Friday Harbor does have an uh, airstrip, but most people arrive by ferry. Friday Harbor sits about 100 miles north of Seattle, Washington, and they have an average yearly temperature of 52 degrees. 
Number 7. Edisto Beach, South Carolina. Edisto Beach is a small town on the coast of South Carolina. This town is on Edisto Island in South Carolina's low country. It's right between Charleston and Hilton Head if you're looking for it on the coast. I love this part of the country. This is one of my favorite places. Between Charleston and Savannah, Georgia, uh, it's just amazing area. But Edisto Beach is known for its beautiful beaches and unspoiled nature and its laid back atmosphere. It's kind of a, reminds me of Key West kind of. The town is also home to a number of historical sites including Edisto Beach State Park and the Penn Center, which is on St. Helena Island right in that area. Edisto Beach was first settled by the English in the 17th century. The island was used as a plantation for rice and indigo. In the 19th century, Edisto Beach became a popular destination for summer vacationers. If you visited Edisto Beach and just fell in love with it and wanted to stay, buy a house, forget it. Nothing's for sale. But if anything was for sale, you're looking above 700000 at a minimum. The island itself, not Edisto Beach, does have some homes for sale and they start around 500,000, 450, somewhere in that area. And they go all the way up into the millions, obviously. It's near the ocean. That's what happens. The closest city, big city I should say, is Charleston, South Carolina, about 60 miles away. Edisto Beach has a population of about 1,400 residents and their average yearly temperature is 67 degrees. That's not bad. Number six, Sanibel Island, Florida. Sanibel Island is just offshore from the Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. This place is known for good fishing, 25 miles of bike path, beautiful beaches, and not a lot of people most of the year. I have a friend from high school who retired out the Cape Coral area. I asked him if this gets a lot of tourists or anything like that. I said, not really. It's the locals love it, but there's other places the tourists will go to in the Cape Coral area, like Fort Myers Beach and a few other places. He said, if you're smart, you'll go to Causeway Island Park, which is the little Causeway Islands where the bridge that takes you out to Sanibel Island. He did say if you go out there, pack a lunch because he thinks there's only like one building and it's a bathroom. Sanibel was first settled by the Spanish in the 16th century. The island was used as a fishing and farming community. And in the 19th century, Sanibel Island became a popular destination for winter vacationers. The island is home to a number of nature preserves, things like that. But if you like beautiful beaches, clear water, and tons of seashells, this is a great place to go. And it's not terribly crowded. Now, like I've said, it's not terribly crowded compared to other beaches in the area. Sanibel Island sits about 25 miles from Fort Myers, Florida. They've got a population of about 6,600 people. And if you want to buy a house there, you're looking at 500,000 for a shack and it goes up into the tens of millions. The average year round temperature here is 75 degrees. Number five, Provincetown, Massachusetts. Provincetown is at the northern tip of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. This seaside town is on the site the Mayflower landed in 1620, and it's commemorated by a huge tower called Pilgrim Monument and the neighboring Provincetown Museum. Provincetown was used as a fishing and whaling center in the early days, and in the 19th century, it became a popular destination for artists and writers, people like that. You know, hippies. Just kidding. I used to have a neighbor. He was just an angry old man. And no matter what the situation was, if anything went wrong, he blamed it on those goddamn hippies. <laughs> he'd, he'd shake every time he said it. His head would like shake like jello. My cable's out and it's hippies. See the price of gas? See what those hippies are doing to us? One time he actually said, if you leave it up to those hippies, we'll have a nuclear war. I was like, you know, John, never mind. <laughs> Hippies aren't known for their <laughs> nuclear weapons. Anyway, Provincetown is a very LGBT plus friendly atmosphere. If you want to buy a house here, you better have a pretty thick bank account. You won't find anything below, let's say, $1.5 million. They actually have one home there right now that's going for $6.5 million. It's not worth it. It's five bedrooms, three baths. It's rustic, it's old, it needs a lot of work. I think this person put it up there in case some rich billionaire is just looking for a chunk of property. It's ridiculous. $6.5 million for this house. I don't get it. You can even buy a house that's, it's a huge house. It's got like four bedrooms, six baths, almost 8,000 square feet, and it's on the pier. I'm sure it was a restaurant or something like that at one point. Anyway, if you want to live here, the nearest big city would probably be Boston. That's about 120 miles away. 
You also got Province, Rhode Island, which is about the same distance, like 122 miles away. Provincetown has a population of about 3,500 residents, and the average year-round temperature is 52 degrees. It's a little brisk, but it's a beautiful little town. Number four, Malibu, California. Now, this one's a little complicated. Really, I'm talking about Zuma Beach. Zuma Beach is located in Malibu, California, and it's about 25 miles west of Los Angeles. Anything you need if you're living in Malibu, you might find there, but probably the closest city is Santa Monica, which is part of the LA area. But most people will go into Santa Monica if they're looking for something. This whole area is just beautiful California coastline. Got everything from swimming, sunbathing. You can have a picnic. There's also a number of hiking trails in the area that are up into the hills behind the beach. Now, Zuma Beach is a county beach, which means it's always free to go there. You don't have to pay anything. There might be some parking that you got to pay for, but not a big deal. Now, Zuma is a huge beach. The parking lot will fill up during holidays and the summer months, but that doesn't mean the beach is overcrowded. There are a ton of Hollywood types that live around this area. I'll give you a few because this could go on all day. Pamela Anderson lives there or has had a house there. Jennifer Aniston lives there. Musician Beck, actress Kristen Bell, Halle Berry, Valerie Bertinelli, Emily Blunt, Jeff Bridges, Mel Brooks, Bruce Buffer, the announcer for the UFC, James Cameron, Avatar director, Johnny Carson used to have a beautiful house here. He's since passed away, obviously. Cher lives there. Dick Clark used to live here. Courtney Cox lives here. John Cusack. Miley Cyrus has a home here, or at least used to. Robert Downey Jr. basically has a farm in the hills above Malibu in Zuma. Mel Gibson. He was famously arrested here for drunk driving. Whoopi Goldberg. Louis Gossett Jr. Kelsey Grammer. You get the idea. That's only to the G's. That brings us to another thing about Malibu. It is expensive to live here. There's homes right now going for 39 million, 36 million, 54 million, 46 million. Uh, at a bare minimum, if you want to buy a house here, you better have two and a half million dollars. You better be ready to spend that. But like I said, if you want to go to a bigger city, Santa Monica is right down the road. It's about 23 miles. LA is about 25 miles. Downtown LA is closer to 30 miles. Malibu has a population of just over 10,000 residents, and Zuma Beach is kind of on the north side of it. They have an average yearly temperature of 61 degrees. Now, because the ocean breeze, if it's, let's say, 65 in Malibu, and you go in a little bit to Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, Newberry Park, that area, or even Calabasas, it'll be probably 90 or 85. Number three, Manzanita, Oregon. Manzanita is a small town on the Oregon coast, about 25 miles south of Seaside and about 25 miles north of Tillamook. This town is known for its beautiful beaches and laid back atmosphere and its abundance of outdoor activities. This is another place now. It kind of every time I've been there, I get that hippie vibe too. you know, like there's the art types there, things like that. Not talking bad about them. I'm just telling you, you know what to expect if you move to a place like this. It's also home to a number of art galleries, shops and restaurants. Restaurants. Manzanita was founded in 1850 by a group of settlers from the Midwest. The town was originally named Manzanita Station because of the many Manzanita trees that grew in the area. The town's name was changed simply to Manzanita in 1890. Manzanita, as you can imagine, is a popular destination for tourists, especially during the summer months. But it doesn't get nearly as crowded as places like Cannon Beach, Seaside, Tillamook. There's a number of hiking trails here. You Great fishing and kayaking. And if you're looking for it on a map, it's about 90 miles west of Portland, Oregon. Just far enough away not to get any of that Portland stank on you. Manzanita has a population of just over 600 residents, so it is definitely not crowded with locals. And the average year-run temperature here is 53 degrees. Number two, Cape May, New Jersey. Cape May is a small town on the coast of New Jersey, and it's known for its beaches, and its Victorian architecture. It's also got a really nice atmosphere. One of our longtime subscribers on this channel is from just down the road. Lou is from Wildwood, and he said, if you want tourists and you want crowded beaches, you go to Wildwood. If you want to go someplace and relax, you head down to Cape May. 
If you want to buy a home in Cape May, you're looking at about $1.2 million to be really near the beach, and it goes up. Doesn't get crazy like Malibu. There's no $50 million homes here. I think they max out probably closer to four. But if you go inland a little bit in the town, you could find homes for $450,000, $500,000, things like that. Cape May is about 100 miles north of Philadelphia. Just kidding. It's 100 miles south of Philadelphia, but it's only about 40 miles down the coast from Atlantic City. Far enough away not to really affect your real estate prices, but close enough to go to if you need to get something. Cape May has a population of about 4,000 residents and their average yearly temperature is 52 degrees. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link for that channel down below. We'd really love it if you went over there and subscribed. All right, on to number one. And number one, Destin, Florida. Destin is a small town on the coast of Florida, and it's known for beautiful beaches, really clear water, and its abundance of seafood restaurants. The town is also home to a number of golf courses and spas, and it is centrally located. It's about two hours east of Mobile and about two and a half hours west of Tallahassee, or about, you know, 120 miles west of Tallahassee. If you want to buy a home here, it's actually reasonable. It's got nice coastline and everything like that, great beaches. But if you get in a couple miles off the beach or a couple blocks at least, homes start going for about 440, 500,000, things like that. You get down towards the beach, 2.5, 1.6, 1.6, a lot of those going on here. And I think the or the most expensive home I found was about 4.8 million dollars. That's right on the beach, beautiful, ready to go. You gotta have the coin for it. Destin, Florida has a population of about 12,000 residents and their year round average temperature is 75 degrees. That's nice. That kind of temperature, you hit the beach, you know, nine months out of the year. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day and be nice to each other.